Welcome back to Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. I'm personal financial planner, columnist, and financial therapist, Rick Kaler. Research tells us that 90% of all financial decisions are made emotionally, not logically. For nearly four decades, I've been helping people make better money decisions. So what makes my financial worldview different from most financial experts? I blend the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Good money decisions are not just about the money. So let's get started with today's episode. So welcome back to another uh, edition of my podcast. And uh, my guest is doing this for her YouTube channel. And uh, this is a grand experiment, which my whole podcast is. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> so I have with me Gail Coleman. Uh, Gail is a CFP, has practiced out of the Boston area for decades, and is now splitting time between South Carolina, Boston, outside of Boston, and Maine. That's correct. And she is just an awesome person. Uh, 28 minutes in this podcast is not going to do the do justice just to her depth and talent and what she brings and the reason the reason that we thought this would be fun to do is I recently was writing a chapter for a book where I referred to Gail to her famous quote and which I said is only famous to Rick but let's <laughs> And I, I have quoted this quote in several of the books that I've written, and I quote Gail all the time when I speak, and I get the quote wrong. I mean, I'm kind of in the in the in the area. So, Gail, why don't so so that we get it right? Why don't you go ahead and give us your famous quote? Well, there's two versions. The first one is, I can only go as far with my clients as I've gone with myself. And then the second time it was said, a few months later, under the same mm, kind of experience, was we can only go as far with our clients as we've gone with ourselves. And this was said 20, over 20 years ago. So this is what's one of the reasons I'm here is it's fascinating to me that this quote is still interesting, if it is. But I leave that up to the expert, Rick, to <laughs> decide. I think what, what um, I mean, this resonated with me. And, and Gail and I first met each other on the desert, desert in California, I think it was, <clears throat> at a training with uh, George Kinder. And we were actually in the second cohort of people that took this training to be able to train the um, two-day seminar that he did. Seven stages of money maturity. Money maturity, right. And uh, I actually of... met you in Nasrud before that. It was like, that was so. Oh, sure. Yeah. At Estes Park. In Estes Park. So what had happened is George's book came out and in the Boston area, he had a general public two-day seminar. And that's and I had attended that. And he asked, you know, the participants, about 20 of us, why are you there? And I was probably the only financial professional at that program. And I said, well, I, you know, I can only go as far with my clients as I go myself. So I'm here for my own development. And then we had Estes Park, and I think you and you know, everybody who was there mostly did the two day. And then George offered this deep dive for a week with people who wanted to learn more about the seven stages of money maturity. So there were 10 of us. And yeah, and we all became best friends after that. We couldn't help but it, right? 
<laughs> quite a bonding experience and, and it's true. Lifelong friendships were formed at that training. And so Gail, what you said around we can only take clients as far as we've taken ourselves. I mean, if every once in a while I come across these what feel like just huge universal truths. And I think this is so incredibly foundational and important to maybe to anybody in the helping business to actually be a consumer of what they preach or the service that they deliver. And I mean, well, you know what, that is, that's absolutely true. And it's, and when we're in these professions, when we are, are, are trained, those are some of the fundamental principles that are understood, I believe. But I, but I want to just touch on something that you said. It's like these, these fundamental universal truths. When that's said, to me, that feels like it's a human truth. Even if I'm not helping, why would I ever want to, to engage in experience with someone that I care about and, and impose something on this person that I really never have embodied myself, that I haven't really directly experienced. And so that's where that comes from is we can all take an hour long course or a weekend training and we think, oh, I, I get this. And that's, this comes from the five stages of learning and that I learned from Stuart Heller many years ago that, you know, we hear something, we review it, and we understand it. And that's all cognitive based. And, and when we understand something, our brain will tell us that we know it, and we do. But that's far, 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 far from actually embodying it and actually being able to deliver it and practice it in a really generous and loving, compassionate wise way. So, I mean, it's funny to be on the, you know, we're in our 60s. So we've been around the track a few times. We've done a lot of deep dives, you know, on the desert with the seven stages was just one of them. And so I know you have a lot of people who are younger and come and speak to you about, you know, how do, what do we do and um, to get trained? And it's really a journey. It's just simply practice. And I know that everyone's got their own journey. And our teachers show up when we're ready. And so I, I think I've said a lot and I probably have gone sideways, so sorry, but I just did, wanted to make the distinction between when we understand something, that's one part of our, our learning stages. When we get into practice, that's when we actually have the experience that our clients will be having. So we, we wanna have those experiences before clients do or anybody we love that we're talking to. Yeah. yeah you just said a lot there, the thing that came, came up just right now is um, doing no harm, which is a, a tenant of the medical profession. And the idea that, that uh, as you said, we don't want to foist onto somebody else projections and assumptions of what this is going to do for them when we have never experienced that ourselves or gone there, which, which is a really, is really shallow. I, I don't know that it's perceived by the person as being shallow. It's like, oh, geez, I learned this is how it works. So I'm going to try it out on you. But you said something that I think, again, is so foundational. I think it goes back to how, if I want to say ancient and wise, the, this statement that you've made is. And I think of a, there's a Bible scripture that says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, 
thereby deceiving yourself. Mm. Interesting. And that, I mean, that is so rich. Yeah. It's exactly what you just said. That because I hear it, because I understand it, because I have the knowledge, there's somehow this, this inborn ability we have to think that I got it or that I do it. Yeah. And that's a huge deception because I don't. Yeah. And can, you know what? Here's what's so even so cool is I think all religions has the same message. So in Buddhism and in some of my teachers in, in Buddhism, they talk about, you know, listen and then investigate. Do not believe what I'm saying, but, you know, hear what I'm saying and you investigate, you experience yourself what I'm saying. And you, by your own direct experience and practice, come to that realization. So, you know, it goes back to the, what you said, the universal truths is that, and we all have different paths and different journeys, but essentially we're, it's the same. Do you follow me? I have so many thoughts going in so many directions because this is, this is uh, something that you and I grapp grappled with along with several other planners. We called ourselves the pioneers. Mm, yeah. And Dick Wagner was a member of that. Uh, Elizabeth Chaton, Marcy Yeager, Lisa Bowie, uh, Troy Jones, David Brand. And then we had some extras that came. Rich. Got Rich. Hindi, Rich. Yep. Dave Yeski. Yes, Michael Smith. Smith, yeah. And we get together. I, I, we were, we formed probably right around this training we did in the desert, which was around 2000. And, you know, we've run into this thing called emotions and money. And what does this mean? And this is where I, <laughs> I learned to throw out my agenda because they would get together in this location somewhere in the country and there'd be no agenda and we'd spend three days together yeah. like this is anathema are you kidding me no agenda we don't know who the speakers are and so i got cured pretty quickly of that and it was a incredibly rich time and i said all that to say that we we grappled with a lot of things during that like okay we need some guild or how are we going to train how are we going to mentor how are we going to help people do their own work, right? What is this? What does it mean? And we never, <laughs> we never got it answered. <laughs> and I'm just wondering today, Gail, and I think it hits along what you just said, and maybe I'm jumping way too far ahead as a consumer, but, but there's a lot of consumers listening to this is like, Okay, I think it makes intuitive sense. I think it makes intuitive sense, certainly to the consumer, that if somebody's going to be telling me to do something, I want them to have success in doing that. It's a question I always have of any consultant that I hired. hired. <laughs> well, have they done it? Do they have successes? How do you know if somebody has done their own work? How do you know someone that has gone ahead before you? Are you asking me uh, as, yeah. a, as a person or, okay, as a person or, well, I notice I have several, I'd say, layers of answers. First, there's the, I'm going to use some integral language because that's where I've done a lot of training. So integral theory and integral coaching. And so you can have very exterior answers to that. All of these credentials, you know, certified this, registered this. And I say those are important, but what is on the interior, which is invisible, which is your own felt sense and which is, I'm just gonna go there. 
where I've done a lot of work and continue to work in somatic intelligence. So your, your body wisdom. And what I'm excited about is brain science is now kind of proving the wisdom of our body and it's now being measured. So we've got enough metrics and enough science that is supporting our own intelligence. And that's, that's really, in my view, the most generous and loving direction we as human beings can go, regardless of what field we're in, financial planning, you know, some other kind of medical profession, whether, you know, it, it, whatever work we're in, to be able to point the people we are with and the ones we are serving back to themselves because their wisdom is within them. It's inside of them. So when I am with someone, this is to answer your question, Rick, how do I know whether I'm with someone who's not full of shit? Sorry, I don't know if you cut, sorry. Is if as no, I'm, you've unedited, Gail. Not, well, good. I, I'm glad I didn't say another word, which <laughs> I hope I don't. I feel it. I feel people. I actually am tuning into what my body's saying. And, you know, am I comfortable? Am I getting a vibe? And it's, you know, intuition, it's instinct. And it doesn't mean that if I'm getting a weird vibe, I'm going, oh, this, this person is awful because it's not true. But it means that I'm going to be more discerning. I'm going to investigate. I'm going to get, understand more what's going on. By the way, is this points to something else that I wrote about almost 20 years ago, and it's about this safe space. So what does the space feel like that I am in, inhabiting? So it's not only our own body, but what's going on around me? Does this, this space feel authentic and clean and safe? And am I connecting with this person? So that's my, those are some of my barometers. And if I'm feeling funny or not safe or connected, then I will ask about it. I'll say, I, I noticed that this is going on for me. Can we, can we track a little bit? I want to make sure that the people I'm that are working with me, that I'm asking for support, that I'm, I'm feeling connected. So th that answer your question? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of answers to the question in there. And, and ju I'm just appreciating what, what I want to say, your ability to really be aware of your body and the flinches, my terminology, and the awareness, the wisdom that comes from that. And you are so far ahead of what I want to say, where this has gone, because as you've alluded to, there's lots of research coming out, out on the connection between the body and the brain and all of this. And you were into this. I remember sitting in meetings with you when you'd be like, whoa, stop, and would bring out I'm just going to call it a flinch because that's something that I can understand or something that wasn't authentic, something that wasn't resonated where I would just go, I just pound that baby down and just go ahead on through. And uh, so in, the, in that way, you've been such a, a teacher to me. And getting back to this somatic wisdom, I'm, I'm going to guess a couple months ago, I had uh, Barry Tesler on. And Barry Tesler is a somatic psychoanalyst or a somatic therapist. Mm -hmm. And she was the first person I ever heard that used the term financial therapy. And I had no idea what the word somatic meant. <laughs> Zero. And I think it's just so interesting that around that same time, you're dialed in to the body to somatic wisdom. And I think what you say that is so true, and, and as you know, doing a lot of what's called internal family systems, mm -hmm. 
And, you know, as we look at all of these uh, traditions and, and various philosophies, it's just amazing to me how they tie together because in IFS, they would completely agree that the wisdom is within, that within every person, there's the wisdom and understanding to know what is needed, where, what the decision is. And the same thing with the Enneagram. The Enneagram is all about becoming present. Yeah. And, and ac accessing. Absolutely. And, and integrating into the healthiest aspect of your typology. Yeah. Well, I want to just let's tap a little bit into into. I mean, bring even integral theory into this and in the, in the different lines of development, how our gardeners work. You know, those are different multiple intelligences. So the somatic line is just one form of intelligence. And just like spatial intelligence or cognitive or line or interpersonal or, or spiritual moral. But you and I had a conversation at retreat. It was back in 2006. I remember it distinctly because, it, you know, you have these moments, like you kind of go, oh, that was a moment. Yeah. I mean, I still can picture it. Like there was a famous quote. <laughs> like your famous quote moment. Well, yeah, but this one was a more, more personal one because you and I were sitting there. It was outside. You, there was a fence behind you. I don't know if you're going to remember this. Maybe you will. But I asked you, I said, when are we going to bring the wisdom of the body into all matters of money? This was 2006. And you looked at me like shaking your head in pity. Like, whatever, Gail. We can't even get the psychology of money going. <laughs> and I just was like, okay. You know, and... And it was at that time I had been studying, you know, breath and body work with again Katie Hendricks. I was going, I was, you know, really deep into integral theory because of what Dick Wagner had done. And and, you know, but I mean, I don't even this your podcast is gonna go everywhere. Why that quote is just, I think it holds the, you know, we can only go as far with our clients and, and as we've gone with ourselves. We're still in development. We are just these human experiments and you know i well and is time up i mean i don't know we could be coming to time and i don't even know it we've just gotten started i got another five minutes and maybe we maybe we do a second part to this yeah i vaguely remember that and my reaction is completely believable like good yeah. grief gail you're like 10 years down the road. <laughs> well, and, and guess what? So if we kind of mark 1995-ish when the psychology of money became, you know, kind of known or it, it birthed, it's taken 25 years for the CFP board to have the psychology be any kind of competency that a CFP needs. So it's 25 years, let's just say. I mean, Probably I think 15, we got another 10 to go for some somatic. Well, yeah, I've been told that, you know, I'm too far ahead of the parade. I scare people. And, you know, I used to, that used to get me down. And right now I'm like, you know what? Whoever wants to come play, you bright light bulbs that are, are gutsy and want to jump off and leap and, and learn how to, really flow and not and and not have to know like you know i bet you don't need an agenda anymore for all of your meetings you know you you can flow in the meetings and you know agendas are great as a scaffolding you know but when when you you know life is about as you said being learning to be in the present moment like this is it you know, we're, if we're in the future, it's a future fear that, you know, if we're in the past, is this, this regret? And those are places that are pointing to us to come home to what's going on right now. And what's that fear? And, you know, and clean it up. Just love it. Appreciate it. Befriend it. 
cleaning up. It's just a, you know, a part of us and it's a wave. It's an emotion that's going to come and go because we're human. I want to be sure to mention your work in somatic finance. You have a blog that comes out. You put that out when you want to, or is it twice a month? It's twice a month. Well, I have a a blog and then with a practice, and then I have a second blog that comes out with a, a deepening practice. So to support embodiment, the SOMA, we practice and, and I in a ton of practices and on my websites, but um, so this is just a tiny practice to get us into our, our body and to begin to experiment. So easy, easy peasy. I, and I, I want to say there, there's so much to say about the, the body connection. And it was actually out on the desert. I think when I did my first body scan type meditation, uh-huh. and I remember some stuff that came up for me that I was just shocked. That was a sensation in my body. I mean, I remember when my coach Tracy Beck has once said, so, so Rick, uh, what are you feeling in your body? I'm like, what are you talking about? Feeling in my body, what? Well, Rick, all feelings start as sensations. I'm like, not with me. <laughs> I was just clueless. And I like to say, if I can get this stuff, anybody can get this stuff. What's the, the address of your blog? I would go to www.somaticfinance.com and then find it there. But and it's, I don't know. I'm, I mean, that's where I would go. And there's a bunch of practices and you can, you can sign up there. But uh, I just want to say that Gail is a phenomenal writer, a phenomenal writer. And there's so much that you write on that, that I just, I just resonate with. And when I'm really resonating to my bones, I'll reply to you like, wow, this was like extraordinarily good because it's all so good. Thank you. You're very and you just have a wonderful way of making this really practical and applicable. So if the word somatic just scares you or causes any confusion, get on Gail's blog and read that. And all of a sudden it's going to come home to you that, that um, Gail, you're talking about everyday life. And in such a rich, such a, a down-to-earth, personal, tangible way. Hmm, thank you. Oh. Well, but isn't, wouldn't you say that when we really, really hone in on the financial planning that we do and we hone in on money, that money is just very basic and normal, that if we can really come home to ourselves really love ourselves, really just, you know, that money can be just as simple as that as well. We're going to end it there. Okay. (laughs) Words of wisdom. Absolutely. So, Gail, thank you so much for the conversation. Thanks for joining me, Rick Kaler, for another episode of Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. This is where I combine the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Remember, every financial behavior, whether it appears illogical to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying beliefs, feelings, and thoughts. Sign up for my weekly blog at financialawakenings.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next episode.